Welcome back to another episode of A Cup of Joe. My name is Joe Escobedo, and very excited on the show because today we have Guillaume Villar. Thanks so much for being on the show, Guillaume. Hey, thanks for having me, Joe. How are you doing? Good, good, good. Now, for those of you who are not familiar, Guillaume is actually the Marketing and Commercial Innovations Director at Carl Stores Asia. So, Guillaume, could you share a little bit more about yourself and maybe share something that very few people know about you? Very few. Okay, no worries. Um, well, first of all, so my name is Guillaume Villard, indeed. I live in Singapore since uh, 2013, uh, and I work for Carl Stortz, who is, uh, since uh, 75 years, uh, innovating in the domain of uh, endoscopic camera and uh, imaging system, uh, helping uh, surgeons perform uh, minimally invasive surgeries and diagnostic. So that's what we do as a business. As to me and what people uh, may not know about myself, uh, let me think about this. Uh, well, if you know me and you work with me for a while, you see the tall man probably assertive and so forth. But actually what people may not know is that I'm deep inside. I think I'm an introvert person. Uh, and as you see today, I am, uh, you know, fighting against my nature and trying to uh, be a more an extrovert. So I think I'm an introvert by nature and extrovert by profession. That's probably what people uh, <laughs> wouldn't know uh, about me. And uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I know exactly how you feel. I have exactly the same way. So I definitely consider myself an introvert, but because of my business, you kind of forced me an extrovert. And I think the same in your role as a leadership role and kind of as a sales role, it's important that you're kind of That's a little true. bit out there and kind of, so uh, yeah, I completely relate to you. <laughs> so Guillaume, you have had a very kind of uh, rich experience over the years. Maybe you can share kind of your biggest professional achievement to date and how are you able to achieve such a milestone? Um, okay, so professionally, I mean, I've been in sales and, um, and marketing for all my career. Uh, I've been achieving fast paced uh, growth uh, over the years and um, I've been in charge of uh, transforming uh, uh, businesses as well during difficult times and doing it uh, successfully but all of these achievements uh, also called achievements have one thing in common uh, which is that uh, I never did it alone uh, so looking back I think the main achievement is really to have been uh, fortunate to kind of uh, touch uh, people's uh, lives in one way or the other and inspire some of my colleagues and and, uh, and partners to uh, to, to become a greater and better version of themselves. Um, it's really the most important thing to me. Uh, if you truly try to understand uh, what success looks like in someone's eyes, and you mm -hmm. are, um, then you, you see that people are more uh, receptive to coaching, more receptive to feedbacks, um, and, and then you know, they, they build this confidence and, and learn from there. So my biggest achievement is by, I mean, Nowhere near is really to uh, groom some talents and, and work uh, at, uh, at seeing uh, some of my colleagues uh, become uh, my successors or, or go way beyond uh, what I would ever be able to, to achieve myself. <laughs> well, I mean, that's great to hear. So just to recap, you said that, you know, a lot of success has come through the teams and working with the right people and obviously building teams along the way. Um, interesting line you said about seeing success in their eyes. Can you maybe share a little bit more in terms of what you mean by that? Because I think it's a, it's a beautiful quote. Well, I mean, okay, so the, the, the thought process here is that um, you want them to be successful. Um, but what you expect from one individual and what he or she uh, sees as what success truly means or looks like may be a slightly different uh, thing. Uh, so I guess it's important for any manager to, to reach with his colleagues a good consensus on, on what success looks like and what are we trying to achieve. Um, and, and the more we do it, thinking about the individual, what matters to him or her, as opposed to, uh, you know, the traditional uh, business objectives, uh, we want to do this kind of KPIs, we want to achieve these uh, goals and so forth. Uh, the, the more um, concrete it becomes for them. Um, and, and this is what I've used in the past as a way to, um, well, to first of all, to get a consensus on what success mm. looks like, but also on making sure that uh, they are really excited and driven uh, about achieving these milestones. Um, so that, that's what mm. I was referring to. Okay, no, no, that makes perfect. That makes perfect sense. I think just want to give that advice to anyone who's in a similar position building a teams. I think really, really good advice. 
Now, on the flip side, what has been one of your biggest maybe challenges or quote unquote failures along the way? And what did you learn from the experience? Well, first of all, as far as management is concerned, uh, I mean, the, the one failure is that, uh, f you know, succeeding at what I just talked about earlier uh, uh, with few people uh, meant that I probably failed others. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, uh, I mean, or fortunately, I ended up being a manager very early in my career. And looking back, I think uh, as a young manager, I was very... I was probably not, uh, you know, approaching it the right way and uh, and putting myself under too much pressure, and, and uh, it was probably not uh, flying very very well uh, with my team. So, uh, you know, with the years and the maturity and the experience, obviously you, you get better at it. Um, other failure or, or big challenge? I mean, I've been, um, um, hmm. I was tasked to 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 drive a, a project, uh, an internal transformation project. Um, and I did not succeed at driving this project. The main reason for it is because all this while during the project um, was live, I felt that uh, there was a good consensus internally within my business, within my organization, mm -hmm. on what was the problem we were trying to solve and what should be the cure to, to solve the problem. Uh, and so, this was an assumption I had. I thought everybody was clear on this, uh, and obviously they were not. So the key learning of this failure is that you always need to work on getting binds, on, on gaining consensus uh, with uh, with everybody else in the organization. Uh, transformation is not a one-man job; it's a full organization uh, focus, um, and the only way to to achieve it is really to work and work hard at um, getting consensus and buying from everybody and constantly. Uh, I didn't do this mm -hmm. properly back then and that was the, the, main, uh, the main learning uh, I would assume, yeah. So I, I never so blamed them for kind of walking away from that project and, and you know, getting cold feet after a while. I really blame myself because I, uh, I assumed we were all clear on uh, what uh, needed to be done uh, and I didn't really make, make sure of this, uh, of this myself. So yeah, that, that's the main uh, lesson okay. learned. Yeah, I think I think it's interesting because both the I guess the biggest wins in your professional career as well as the biggest challenges um, or failures have come through either getting consensus consensus internally or not getting consensus. And like you said, that really is the, the you know the make or break for a lot of situations. A lot of people Absolutely. think it's you know the skills, the background experience. But at the end, Absolutely. it boils down to, you know, are you able to get the buy-in internally? Are you able to get the, as you said, the team motivated and working towards the same direction? If not, it's, it's like I said, it's very difficult to get a project, you know. Um, Absolutely. Uh, I mean, exactly that. Going. And uh, you, have you heard this quote, you know, that says, uh, what, what is it? If you want to go, what is it? If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, uh, go together. Uh, this, yes. is, this is exactly what we are talking about, right? In today's world, it's all about community. It's all about engagement with all the stakeholders. Uh, no one is calling the shot all by himself. Doesn't work like this. So yeah, that's very important. Yeah, no, I think it's a, it's a, it's a great quote to kind of sum up kind of your experiences on the pros and cons. Yeah. Now, now that you're kind of in the kind of medical device kind of life science space, what do you see as the biggest marketing sales challenges? Yeah, so Carl Stoltz is a medtech company, uh, and so you're right, it's part of this broader uh, sector of uh, healthcare, life science, and so forth, together with maybe pharmaceutical companies, biotech, and, mm -hmm. and so forth, so it's a huge sector. Um, and like many other uh, huge sectors, uh, I guess the biggest challenge for us has been to drive the uh, digital agenda uh, very proactively. What I mean by that mm -hmm. is that um, I think for the main, the main reason is, uh, or I think what is often mentioned is regulation. People say, oh, mm -hmm. we don't go digital because we are a highly regulated industry. Uh, we, we, you know, we deal with people's lives, right? So what we say to our customers do matters and, and, and is uh, regulated, which is a good thing. Um, but mm -hmm. quite frankly, I don't think regulation uh, is really the constraint here. The reason why uh, as an industry, 
we are not very digital minded or rather we are late uh, versus other sectors it's probably because we've been a bit uh, i mean i don't know there's a sense of complacency maybe uh, for mm. many many years we have been you know making billions of dollars and, and or euros and so forth at selling medicine and selling a medical device with a very traditional go to market uh, you had your sales guys on the ground meeting the doctors and, and that was it um, I think since 10 years, the industry has kind of realized that and is playing catch up now. Um, but when you look at various reports, uh, the uh, life science sector overall is still, uh, is still behind. Playing you know, catch up, as I said, but still behind uh, other sectors uh, when it comes to uh, digital, uh, digital adoption and using digital to you know, provide value to our customers ultimately. Mm. I think that's a, that's a good point. I don't think it's a challenge just for the life science. I see a lot of kind of traditional um, players who are facing the same right. thing who are, like you, like you said, they've done it the same way for, you know, 20, 30 years, and it's just the way it's been done. Um, so I think, you know, yeah. yeah. What were you saying? No, no, I, I was about to say when things are, are working well and, you know, it, usually these companies are very big, very heavy. So it's not always that easy to change or at least to, to change very quickly. Um, and uh, and why why would the change since uh, everything was working so fine you know so that's the mindset of uh, of uh, a bit of tradition that we need to uh, to make evolve and again to be fair the industry overall has made this realization and is now moving forward mm. but yeah definitely behind other sectors and obviously the, the leaders being the in the b2c field and so forth of course yeah has there been any factors that you think has accelerated you talked about in the past 10 years I know the coronavirus has probably accelerated recently, but you know any milestone or event that's really helped kind of push a lot of traditional companies to move towards digital. Well, I think I mean, look, doctors and all customers are like all of us, right? They are connected people. They have this kind of device with them. Uh, they so while uh, we still sell through our sales reps and through fairly traditional matters, uh, the marketing guys in the, uh, in the sector has uh, come to the same realization as everybody else that uh, if even a bank, which traditionally is a fairly uh, you know, a traditional sector as well, if a bank mm -hmm. starts to engage customers online, then it should make sense for us. So it's really by seeing uh, banking, insurance, and these heavy mm -hmm. uh, and you traditionally not very innovative uh, sectors going there that I think uh, some people uh, in our sector uh, started to, to wake up. <laughs> That's probably what mm. triggered it. I think it makes perfect sense. I, I'm fortunate to work with a lot of different um, insurance companies and the same situation. I think they had traditionally done it through a lot of, you know, the financial consultants, you know, yeah. being on the ground and things like that. But what they realize is that um, the space is coming highly competitive. Everyone's online now. So things like we talked about before the importance of social selling and building up your presence as a social, as a um, sales rep. Is extremely important because just the market is so competitive and it's becoming so saturating, especially in Singapore. Um, so you talked about sales reps being kind of the, the key force in the past. Do you see their kind of presence and the, the whole concept of social selling becoming more prominent in kind of your guys' space? Yeah, I think that I think it is. Um, I, I'm not sure. I mean, I've joined uh, Carl Stoltz uh, a few months ago only. So as far as we're concerned here in Asia, uh, I think the concept of social selling itself may not be very well known. And yet mm -hmm. I see a lot of my colleagues who are already active on social media and using it to engage with customers. So I think to some extent, there's a good basis here to, to build on. Um, mm -hmm. They they probably use it pro, um, mostly to to reach out to customers and you know see what our customers are talking about because a lot of our customers are key opinion leaders as themselves so they they drive uh, medical innovation and they want to share their knowledge uh, with their peers so uh, seeing our customers doing it is probably encouraging uh, some of my colleagues in the industry overall to to do it as well but when it comes to really become um, or build their own personal brand and go the extra mile and you know sharing content mm. and, and and showing their expertise uh we are probably a bit shy right now uh so i think mm. this is definitely the, the, the next step for us uh, is to uh, establish very concretely what uh social selling is as a concept and, mm. and make sure that uh we all uh, leverage it uh, to the fullest 
uh, so that's really uh, really the next step for us. Yeah, you know, absolutely. I think uh, it, it's good to hear that you already have people who are doing it internally. I think those people could definitely be leveraged as kind of ambassadors, kind of showing what they've done, and then obviously rolling exactly. that out to the people who haven't done it before. Um, yeah. And I think you bring up another good point is a lot of people think of social selling in terms of prospecting, in terms of you know customer acquisition. But I think you bring up a very good point in terms of reaching out to your existing customers, finding out more about what they're up to, um, building that rapport and kind of helping with things like renewals, cross sales and upsells. I don't right. think a lot of people think of social selling like that. It's very much like, oh, who can we close um, today? Yeah. So I think it's, a, it's an interesting way of concept. And, of, and it's maybe because we call it, it social it selling. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> maybe it's because of the, the, the terminology we use to define it. Uh, but as you know, I was, uh, I was working in a, in a B2B tech company before and, and we rolled the, we mm -hmm. rolled out the, the social selling concept uh, quite successfully there. And, and as you said yourself, it was for us, it was at the time very much so, uh, you know, how to prospect, how to reach out to, uh, to new customers and so forth. Um, in in our field, in the medical field, uh, we will very likely be much more subtle in this approach, uh, and it mm. will be really about having some expertise to share, uh, some uh, knowledge uh, to to kind of uh, spread out there, um, and, and it's mm. probably not going to be a, a very aggressive uh, prospecting uh, culture that we will start uh, implementing uh, on, uh, on social media. If that makes sense. Mm. Yeah, no, it's probably it's probably a good thing. Like you said, I, I agree with you. I think the I don't particularly like the term social selling because I don't think it really encompasses what what it all is involved. For me, it's it's more on the social side than it is the selling and building those relationships, building that rapport. Um, that's where kind of the the business you know trickles down to. But um, yeah, I, I think the the definition needs a little bit of work. And um, you mentioned kind of your previous role, kind of in the B two B space. We were fortunate to uh, work on a social selling program together what, what yeah. was your experience of that just my curiosity oh, that was great that was a great experience i mean you have been able in a very short period of time to uh, explain to uh, i would say various uh, uh, persona we had internally some that were quite advanced on the topic some others that had no idea uh, what it was you've been able to address everybody's concern and everybody's needs uh, in a very quick uh, quick uh, uh, timeline and you covered all the basis of what is important uh, for each of them uh, for as an individual uh, to to be you know active on LinkedIn among other uh, platforms uh, so that was that was great and very useful so very practical um, I've seen trainings before where um, conceptually we were understanding well where we were uh, invited to go but then concretely how mm. to make it happen uh, it was probably uh, too abstract and, and you know this is the kind of training you don't want to have right because you walk out of the room you're mm. like okay that's cool and then before you know it you you, you know you, you don't do anything about it and, and you leave it there um, uh, con you know conversely with you it was very pragmatic very practical giving uh, tools and, and process and steps to go through and and most importantly you were following through with us so it was kind of uh, you know great to make sure that we would deliver and we would build uh, on uh, what we agreed on on building that was a good memory good uh, good experience well <laughs> thank you so much that means, means a lot to me i really appreciate that and i think uh, i i'm heartened sure. to hear that you bring up uh, you know practical because i think that's one thing that i try to do in each of the sessions is make it so practical that you can apply it the next day or even that day so i'm so glad that you got out of, got that out of the, the session yeah absolutely absolutely and trying to use it ever since <laughs> yeah well well like i said i i have obviously been following you and i you know i tell people you know follow guillaume because i i'm just always blown away by kind of how you've taken what we had talked about and just taken it to the next level like just the engagement you built, just the kind of positioning you've taken in the, the digital healthcare space. Um, I always use you even as kind of a, the new classes say, check, check out what Guillaume is doing because um, he's obviously doing it right. So like I said, I, I'm really glad we were able to catch up because right, like I said, too, you were, yeah. <laughs> well, I know you have a lot on your plate right now, especially with what's going on, you know, the economy and things like that. So That's right. it's quite busy. nonetheless, yeah, nonetheless, I think you have done an incredible job of kind of building your presence. And I think it's an inspiration to others. And hope it, hopefully it helps kind of give those in the, the medical space a little bit of a kick in the behind and say, look, it, this is possible. Look at what Guillaume is doing. So 
uh, you, so, yeah. you know, you will be one of the key opinion key opinion leaders. <laughs> oh, I'm, I doubt that. But uh, ma many others are, are doing it as well, and uh, and we we are definitely welcoming uh, more to to join us every day. And, and it's fun doing it, really. I mean, this is not this has nothing to do with work in the sense of you know, like a task you have to do or something. Um, yeah. It, you need to be spontaneous. You need to be yourself. Uh, you need to just, yeah, share what, what you have in mind, what matters to you. And uh, ultimately this, you know, creates a positive cycle, bringing value to your audience and learning from them as, as much as they learn from you. So I, I've been on LinkedIn for whatever, 15 years or something. And obviously over the years I've kind of, uh, uh, increase the way I will and improve the way I was using LinkedIn uh, primarily. Uh, but um, I just enjoy doing it, uh, frankly. And uh, like yourself, I mean, it's good to see people who are responding positively to it. Um, mm. So, so that's a good encouragement to do more, to do better and, uh, and keep to, yeah, keep going. Absolutely. I, I think one thing that I want to highlight people watching this is one thing that I found that you do really well and you did this right after our session together is, a lot of people feel very uncomfortable doing video or they think they can just be very polished and they have to have this professional kind of shoot. And I'm like, that's not the case. If anything, you know, people relate to you more when you shoot it on your, on your phone. And I think, you know, right. uh, a week or so after our session, you, you did this, um, you know, uh, announcement, I think, um, just, you know, recording your phone. And it was that's incredible right. because like I said, it, it didn't require you to hire a full-time production team or like, no. you know, and casting and things like that you did it on the spot and the engagement was incredible so for me that was that was very heartening to see and like i said yeah it, that's what it boils down to like i said being authentic and really sharing kind of your own stories and your experience i think that's what people essentially want so that would be yeah, is one true. of my favorite moments i remember it uh, it was a video to talk about uh, opportunities we had in the business at the time so hiring people mm. and so forth and uh uh, yeah, you're right. I took my smartphone and uh, and I went for it. And as I said earlier, I am probably an introvert by nature. So imagine me forcing myself uh, to be on camera. If I can do it, anyone can. Uh, and no, it's not <laughs> perfect. And yes, I have this uh, thick French accent or whatever, but it doesn't matter. You just need to go with the flow, uh, speak your heart and uh, and try to convey the message. Uh, and uh, I, I mean, I don't remember exactly, but I had like 10,000 uh, plus views and, and literally hundreds of people reaching out and stuff like that. So, I mean, from a networking and obviously from a, what was the topic about, which is filling a position in my previous company, that mm -hmm. was that was great because we definitely achieved that. Uh, I mean, that's the world we live in, right? Instead of reading a long article, all of us prefer to consume a very quick snack and roll uh, video mm -hmm. content. And so... Yeah, we, we should do it too as individuals, not only our brands when we do marketing, but uh, but ourselves as well. A absolutely. Like, like I said, now. I think there's a lot of... Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, I think they'll get some, you know, hopefully get some key insights from this too that they can apply to their own kind of organization. So Guillaume, like I said, uh, I really, really appreciate you, you know, sharing your insights and experience today. I think there's a lot of, going back to what you're saying, practical advice that people, not only in the medical and life science space, right. but also those outside can learn from today. So... Thank you so much for that. And how can people get in touch with you if they want to kind of, you know. Through, through LinkedIn, of course. <laughs> okay. <laughs> connect with me, reach out. If you have any questions, anything at all, uh, yeah, happy to connect with you. If you live in Asia or if you live anywhere around the world, uh, definitely looking forward to having a, an opportunity to connect with uh, as many uh, as possible. So do not hesitate. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Joe. That was cool. I appreciate, no worries, uh, my, my I appreciate the invitation. Yeah, yeah, no worries. My pleasure. Always good catching up. And like I said, for those watching, if you enjoyed kind of the interview with Yon today, please do feel free to share it with your, your bosses, your colleagues, anyone who might find it helpful. And otherwise, thank you so much to Guillaume, and we will see you next time. Thank Thanks you. Thanks and take care.